Good morning all. I have received the uh, 8S Flying Capacitors Active Balancer, which I bought on eBay. I think this was uh, £22. Uh, fortunately, this is marked, well, MCN. They don't really care much about the order of these letters, do they? Manganese, Cobalt, Nickel or LFP. And of course, I'm using LFP. Now, on the eBay listing, they had this marked, well, in the photograph, they had this marked as LTO which was why I hesitated to buy it in the first place. And in fact, it's why I bought the four cell active balancer. So here it is on eBay. It's the five amp balancer 8S LiPo4 lithium ion version, battery active equalizer. And you can see here in the photograph, they've actually put a uh, Sharpie mark on the LTO. But in the description, well, in fact, in the title, it says it's the lithium ion version. So in the end, I thought, OK, I'll believe the title and not the photo. And it is indeed the lithium ion version. So £22.72 each. This came from Yun 32 uh, And was it free shipping? Yeah, free economy speed pack shipping. And uh, I'll put a link to this item in the description below. OK, let's take a little look at this and also do some comparisons oh, with uh, this one. Well, first thing I see is this This says um, version 1.2. So it looks like it's a slightly older version than this one because that's V1.4. On the back, it looks much the same, but there is an addition. I'll have to snap that bit of board off there. And that is this. It, there's a little inductor here, and that's presumably a buck converter chip. And I suppose the thinking there, because this one appeared to have I think it's that chip there I don't think I mentioned this in the previous video but that one looks like a 3.3 volt uh, regulator linear and I suppose the reason for going for a buck converter here is that the voltage across here is eight cells worth of well potentially um, MCN battery which is well on my LFP it's 30 volts across there of course across here it's more like 15 so yes you can understand why this is a, a buck regulator switch mode and this is a linear regulator but I think apart from that it's pretty much the same you've got the controller chip there with the run LED eight lots of MOSFET drivers I believe they are the same three transistor circuit is on this one um, as on this one the layout is slightly different three transistors are just positioned slightly differently but they're there so are they the low voltage monitoring I don't really know um, but that's it. Essentially, it's the same. You've got all these polyfuses. You've got the diode linking um, positive of cell 7 to positive of cell 8 if you want to put this on a 7S pack, which is more common if you're using MCN. 8 cells is more common if you're using LFP because of the voltages involved. So I think what I'll do is I'll go and get the battery from the shed. Um, I'll disconnect the BMS, disconnect the high current stuff. I'll bring it in here and attach this. Now I'm just thinking what sequence shall I do it? And I think what I'll do is I'll just simply put the most negative on. Is that the most negative? No, it's that one. The most negative on first, the black wire. Oh, I didn't show you this, did I? You get a full set of um, nine wires, eight red and one black, and they're these nice bendy silic silicone ones. So yeah, put the black wire on and then just simply add the wires as I go. And only when I get to the B7 wire will this actually power up. And then I'll attach the B8 wire. That should work, shouldn't it? Right, as I say, I'm just going to snap this bit of board off, which hopefully is not needed. Right, here's the bicycle battery. It was in my bicycle and it's going back there at some point. Um, it's reasonably well balanced. Actually, I can attach the balancer. This is a balancer and monitor. Um, I had it balancing in the shed. It's been balancing for several days. I mean the balancing is easy to start on this thing. You just press it until it goes green and it's balancing again. Does it without any external power which is quite handy. So I should be okay to start attaching this thing. I think I'm going to sit this perhaps there just with some blue tack initially. But it is going to mean a third set of balance leads because I've got the balance leads for the monitor or balancer. Sometimes I use this and sometimes I use 
this one the little battery checker um, it's also got the balance leads for the BMS and now it's going to have a third set of uh, balancing leads actually for the balancer so I need the new balancer the cables that came with it and I also need um, these little solder lug terminals so I'll solder nine of these onto the ends of the nine wires all nicely done with heat shrink and then I'll start attaching them to the little bolt studs on my battery. I'm not sure if you can see those. No, you can't see them very well, but the little bolts that the balance leads are attached to. And yeah, see if it works. Right, I've put the nine wires onto the balancing board. Now I just need to solder nine of those little solder tags on these ends. So I'll do that. Right, I think I'll put it on this side. So I've got two pieces of blue tack they'll do to hold it in place for the time being and here's my active balancer with all the little ring terminals attached so let's get bolting them up starting with the most negative yeah it's a shame they couldn't have put the little run light the little led there on the top because it's nice to see these capacitors but since i probably want to see the run light i think i can actually mount this upside down like that so I can see the LED yeah I think this is going to be quite fiddly um, I need to get the black one in there I've got to use this spanner but I've got to be careful I don't short anything so I'm going to go slowly take my time not sure how much of this I'm going to be able to film but I'll do what I can right this is the first of the positives so if I attach that nothing should happen and it doesn't but now I'm just wondering will it matter if these all short to each other because they're dangling down off the desk shouldn't do because until I get to B7 this board shouldn't actually power up so I'll just continue like this yeah I just can't get to the little nuts inside here particularly the ones at the bottom so I think what I'm going to do is undo the big bolts and take that link piece out and also this uh, pos and they're going to the XT90 plug at this end split these apart a little bit and that'll make it easier and then put it back together again right that's interesting I've just put um, B6 positive I guess it is onto its position and this light lit up now the two packs are not even connected so it must be getting power between B5 positive and B6 positive. Don't quite know how that's happening, but I think I want to rejoin this pack at this point uh, so that all the voltages are at least referenced to each other. Uh, yeah, that should be okay, joining this center uh, connector there. So let's do that. Yeah, I don't quite understand why that light's on. Um, when I haven't even connected B6 positive yet, let alone B7 positive, which should then go through that diode into the uh, controller chip. But it's on. What I thought I'd do actually is just connect up my battery checker. Uh, now that I've got this uh, middle link back on, all the voltages should be referenced to each other. So it shouldn't destroy this thing. And... Um, yeah that all looks fairly closely matched but I'll leave that on while I plow on with this process so this one has to go on the little nut right down in the bottom there tricky and finally B8 positive goes on there try and get the little nut back on <laughs> it's very difficult because I can't really see what I'm doing okay that nut is on so I'll just splay these out and I'm just wondering if I should poke that through there yeah maybe I will right tighten that one so it's all connected now uh, the only thing that I've got to put back is the main positive wire onto the positive stud but I just wanted to tighten that so that this doesn't move around while I tighten this little one. 
Right, that's on. So, red light's on. How are my cell voltages? Can you see that? Not quite. So let's bring this back in a bit. And they all look pretty good. Um, we've got 3.32 on the positive one. Not quite sure why that hasn't settled down to the same as the others. Maybe they are out of balance and there's a lot of quite a lot of work that has to be done by this because I can't feel the capacitor temperatures with them underneath. Uh, I'll just finish wiring this up. Right now the problem is I can't get this um, Allen key into that screw because there isn't enough room between the main positive and the main negative and I don't want to short them so I think I'm going to saw this down. I'm going to go and put my junior hacksaw on it and make a special shortened version. Right, there's my cut down Allen key. It's a bit of a mess because the saw had a whole load of broken teeth, but whatever. Let's tighten that up without shorting it to its opposite number. And that should be complete. So I'm watching these uh, voltages to see if they're sort of uh, coming together. I think what will really prove this is to start charging this up. So I think I'll take it out to the shed, put it on the solar panel and we can uh, watch it charge up and see if the balancer is doing its job. And out in the shed, here it is in situ. The uh, balancing board is there and things just look a lot different now. All the cell voltages are really well balanced. Uh, within 20 millivolts, so 3.6 is the minimum, 3.8 is the maximum. Let's switch that to that so you can see that it's 26.9. Now my little voltmeter here is saying 27.0. Now this is set to trigger at 27.5 and I think now that's a bit low because I've just calculated that um, eight lots of 3.5 would be 28 volts and eight lots of 3.6 would be 28.8 volts and those sound much more reasonable now that these cell voltages are all effectively locked together. That's um, 3.6 volts of course is way before this thing will trigger because the BMS cuts out at 3.75 so yes I'm having to kind of rethink the way this works now but it just feels so much better with all the cell voltages being just locked together with super glue right well I've just been on the phone for an hour or so and this really isn't doing much uh, I've, I've lowered the trigger voltage on this to 27.2 but I don't think I'm going to hit it today. Ooh, I'm on the end of my wire, but up on that meter up there, we're only getting 200 milliamps in from the solar panel. It's a very dull day today. So I don't think this is going to do anything today. I'll have to wait until tomorrow and then hopefully this will uh, get up to this trigger voltage, 27.2, and we can do the first mine of the energy in that battery. But those are the voltages. They're looking absolutely fantastic. So yes, I'm really pleased with that flying capacitor balancer. And so for this video, that's it. Cheerio.